Today's video is a complete recap and guide as to how I lamb my small flock of Dorper sheep on pasture in Northeast Texas. I'm gonna walk you through preparations I made for lambing. I'm gonna walk you through some of the complications that popped up during 2022, as well as some of the supplies and methods I used to walk through those problems. And at the very end, if you stick around, you're gonna get a look at my cast of characters for 2022. And yeah, I do name some of my sheep. I try to kind of play this professional shepherdess thing, but at the end of the day, some of my sheep end up with names. At the end of the day, sometimes I spend more time taking care of sheep than is profitable. And I used to be kind of embarrassed by that, but the reality is, is that if you're gonna get into farming, you gotta love it. You gotta love working with these animals. You've gotta see the value in what this is beyond dollars and cents. And while you can be smart, I believe, and pencil out profitability and make sure you're making some of the right decisions that might put you on the track to it, half of the pay in farming is enjoying the job. Leave me a comment below if you agree or disagree. So in preparation for lambing, I did three things. Number one was to prep the shed that we have on our property. While my sheep do lamb on pasture, I will use the shed when a ewe needs assistance or if the weather makes it a necessity to give the sheep some cover. For bedding here, I am using the remains of an unpalatable hay bale. A second means of preparation is just simply refreshing all of the supplies that I would need throughout lambing. The third round of preparation that I made was simply to run a pre-lambing inspection on all of my ewes. And here I am primarily checking for parasites and deworming any ewe with a notable parasite load. Here in Upper East Texas, I put my ram in the second week of October for lambs in the first and second week of March. So 2022 was actually an excellent year with respect to complications or rather lack thereof. 2021 was not the case and I've actually put a video link to the four videos that I have on 2021's lambing. But to put it short, the first four births in 2021 ended in three deaths. And in 2022, by the grace of God, I had zero mortality. Everything was born healthy and thriving. But I did have a few minor complications. And one of them was that about eight of my ewes needed assistance at lambing. Six of these eight were a result of malpresentation. And a lamb presenting correctly will have two hooves pointing forward and the nose resting right on top. The problem that kept recurring was that my lambs were coming out with only one foreleg forward. And this added a lot of bulk to the shoulder area. Sometimes a ewe can deliver with one foreleg tucked backward. But this was not the case for me for a couple of reasons. First was that many of the ewes were first time moms and the lambs were very large singles and not necessarily the moderately sized twins that often come from a more mature ewe. And for this reason, the ewe would pass the head and one of those four legs, but those big shoulders would just get jammed. And despite pushing for an hour or more, the lamb would just not pass. So in assisting these ewes, I would give them some time to attempt to deliver the lamb on their own. About 45 minutes, once I saw the water bag break, I would just leave her alone, try to let her push it out on her own. But if after that 45 minutes, one hour mark, I did not see any progression, I'd go in and give her a hand. Whenever I could in assisting these ewes, I would push the head back into the birth canal and drop both of the legs forward. And this is just a way to reposition and make it easier on the ewe as you pull the lamb. But most of the time, the lamb was just too far delivered to push it back. Two of the malpresentations were deliveries that happened overnight. The first one, I came out to check early morning and I found this little ewe in some really significant distress. I was able to deliver her lamb and it was healthy and still alive, but the ewe was really non-responsive as a result of just the exhaustion of trying to push this lamb out all night. She was a first time mom and it was just, it was really rough on her. So I gave her a shot of vitamin B, which is a really great means of replenishing energy after any kind of stressful physical situation. And that vitamin B in the needles to administer is going to be in the shepherdess essentials bundle that I mentioned. And after this, the ewe came to and followed the flock right out to pasture before realizing that she had become a mother. Didn't take her long, and once she did, she was an excellent one. The second you that I woke up to, having been in labor overnight and having complications in labor overnight, 
was an even worse situation. Um, the lamb was really badly hung, and hung just means that the head had been hanging outside of the birth canal for a pretty long time. And this typically results in the lamb being strangled. So I pulled the lamb, assuming it was dead. I went ahead and put it up by the mom's head so that she could sort of at least acknowledge it. Then all of a sudden, the lamb let out this huge sneeze, and I realized I had issued a premature death sentence here. This lamb's head was just swollen like a balloon. It took a whole 24 hours for it to completely go down. Her eyes were bloodshot, I was worried, but it didn't stop her from nursing and really getting up on her feet. This little lamb had a huge welcoming committee. Everybody was really curious as to what was going on with her. And the mom was again in some shock. She had been exhausted from trying to push the lamb out overnight. So again, I followed it up with some vitamin B and within a few minutes, she was on her feet. One of the things that my friend Carl Abel encouraged me to was that when a mom has a really difficult labor, give her some time, but not too much time. You wanna really encourage the mom onto her feet and not let her set and let those muscles get cold and stiff. So the second set of complications that I had, it was two cases of mastitis. Now mastitis is an infection of the mammary glands that can inhibit the function of the udder and really compromise the new lamb. The first case of mastitis I caught before the ewe gave birth. And I made the decision to give the ewe a three day antibiotic regimen before she delivered her lambs. Now, whenever I start talking about shots or antibiotics or things like that, I always get a few comments from some really well-meaning people who will cite that healthy flocks don't need shots, healthy flocks don't need this kind of care. And I totally welcome any comments, any opinions whatsoever, but I'm gonna be really bold with mine. And that is that I believe that the judicious application of modern medicine within flocks is good animal husbandry. The antibiotic regimen was finished about nine days before this you gave birth. And once she did give birth, she raised and weaned the most beautiful set of twins. Now this you did die shortly after weaning. She was old and the mastitis was likely just a symptom of her aging out. But she raised an amazing set of lambs before she left the farm. The second case of mastitis was much more severe and I did not catch it until this you had lambed. After lambing, I did an intermammary infusion, which again, that intermammary infusion will be in the Shepherdess Essentials bundle available at shepherdess.com. But this process was really unpleasant because I had to take sort of this syringe and put that infusion straight into her udder. And yes, this you was cold from my flock. She's not having any more lambs. Once I did infuse it, you kind of have to give the udder a massage for about 50 or 60 seconds, and that's what I was doing here. Yeah, it was kind of gross. So something that was really helpful to me here, and it is this portable lambing jug. During lambing, I did continue my rotational grazing program, and at certain points, the rotation put me out of the range of my main shed. The portable jug gave me sort of a confined area to administer any treatment that I needed without having to make the long trek back to the primary shed. It was a little bit heavy, but I could actually pull the unit a short distance with my body weight, or if I needed to move a longer distance, I could just attach it to the back of an ATV. So excellent maternal instinct is a Dorper breed characteristic. A lot of times people will ask me, you know, what do you do for orphan lambs? What do you do for moms who reject their lambs? And the reality is I really don't have a lot of that. One thing I did make sure to do this year was have supplemental colostrum ready as well as a lamb feeding tube with me at all times. And you guessed it, the feeding tube and colostrum replacer will be in that Shepherdess Essentials bundle. The reality is, is that no matter how good or bad the mom is, sometimes she just doesn't produce a lot of milk. Whether she's a young ewe or an old ewe that's been sick before lambing, varying factors can really affect milk production. And so it's really important that the lamb gets a lot of good colostrum in that first 24 hours. If I had a ewe that was producing a surplus of colostrum, I would milk her and freeze that colostrum because it's far and above better and less expensive but a good quality powdered colostrum replacer is really suitable as well. Now, if you're supplementing because the ewe does not have enough milk, something to keep in mind is that the more the lamb nurses, the more milk the ewe will produce. And we have found that with bottle feeding, the bottle will actually alter the sucking reflex of the lamb, and it does so in such a way that the lamb actually has difficulty latching back onto the mom 
after it's sucked from a bottle. So the feeding tube for me allows the ewe and the lamb to really maintain that nursing bond while making sure that the lamb gets everything it needs in those really vital first few days. So the final issue that I had was I had a lamb that was born kind of wobbly, weak, knock kneed. Um, she had a curved spine, a fuzzy coat, and all of those just kind of pointed to a deficiency of some sort. I kind of just did a self-evaluation and realized that these symptoms, especially the skeletal symptoms, are commonly linked to selenium deficiency. So I went ahead and administered 0.25 mils of BOC under the skin. And BOC is a selenium vitamin E shot. Now BOC is available through your vet only. So in that essentials bundle from shepherdist.com, I actually include an oral gel that can just be administered into the mouth for a selenium. And despite her slow start, this ewe lamb has actually become one of my strongest on pasture. Her growth rate is excellent and she's extremely sound. If you guys have enjoyed this information, here in the next month, I'm hosting a free webinar on the absolute basics of raising, grazing, and marketing sheep. It's going to be one hour, and it's going to be packed, and I am inviting you. So reserve your spot using the link below, and if you're watching this after the live webinar, the link below will just be to the free replay. I hope it helps you guys, and please give me a thumbs up before you head out. Thank you so much for being a part of my farm in 2022.